G'day everyone, welcome back to Brushes with Beck. In today's video I will be trying out my Polychromos colour pencils for the very first time on a full colour piece. So this is also going to be sort of a 12 colour pencil challenge because I only bought 12 colours because I couldn't really afford to get a bigger set at the time and I just wanted to try them out before I invested in a really big set. So what I'm doing today is an image of my Parrot Dory. I am working on hot pressed watercolour paper. I will admit it's not a very good quality hot pressed watercolour paper and that probably worked to my disadvantage. It might have been okay if I'd been using solvents to help blend things out but it was quite a bit of work to sort of get it looking the way I wanted, especially in the background. So as I said, this is the first time I'm using Polychromos on a finished piece. So it was, ooh, I mean, not so much of a learning curve, but just interesting seeing how the pencils laid down, seeing what I could do with them, especially after I just recently finished a piece, which I showed in my previous video with Prismacolor pencils of a, a Tawny Dragon Lizard. So what I've done to begin this piece is I've sketched out my parrot and I've also used a circle tool to draw, draw in some circles in the background because I wanted to get sort of a bokeh style background. I'm not sure that it succeeded, I've never done one before so that was also a first for me in this piece. So as you can see I'm just laying in some light colours in the background to begin with so I can slowly build up those colours over time because I don't want to overfill the paper too early on and not get the colour I want. So it's really important to start light and work your way slowly darker and darker as time goes on. So I actually sketched this out directly onto the paper which did cause some issues later on which you will see because when I sketched it I had some issues getting the beak to look right which means I drew in and erased the beak quite a few times before I got it to be the shape that I wanted it to be and looking accurate. And that's probably the only part of the image that suffers and it, and it does suffer more because it is around her face so it's more obvious because a face and an eye is always the focal point of any picture really. So the fact that it's right in front of her face with those sort of errors in the paper stands out a little bit more than it might have if it were at the end of her tail, or somewhere like that. So I'm starting in now with a second layer of green on the background after doing an initial green and then some additional browns and blues in there and adding over the second green and as you can see it's going much darker already I'm really not using very much pressure. This is very light pressure. Also, I do apologize for how much I'm turning my paper at this stage. I do get much better at this later on in the video. This is the first time I had started filming anything that I was coloring for a video. So this was a really big step for me to realize, hey, I can't be turning this paper around all the time and I need to pay a bit more attention to what I'm doing, where I'm putting my hand, so I do get better at that further along in the video so there won't be as much shifting of the paper. Now this is sped up a really big amount, I think it's at about 20 times speed and you can see it really doesn't look, I mean it's fast, but it doesn't look ridiculously fast, uh, but this is something that took me, I think I had nine and a half hours worth of video and what you see here is 30 minutes of video. So I've really condensed it down, chopped out any unnecessary bits where I'm just sharpening a pencil or thinking about what I'm drawing next and just got the colouring and you can see it's, you know, still 30 minutes of video after I've sped it up 20 times. So 
So once again, in the highlights in the background, I'm just adding extra layers of colour after that initial first layer of colour. And I'm still being fairly light with this. I wasn't sure how dark I wanted those circles to be. Oops, sorry, that was my cat just walked in front of the screen there. Uh, so, you know, I'm just slowly laying them in. And the background actually took me quite a lot more time than I expected. Um, and I think that's just because um, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of paper to cover, and also it was my first time using these pencils on this paper, and I didn't really like how it started out, and everything's just a learning curve, and just adjusting to the pencils and not wanting to go too hard too fast. So I took my time with it. But taking your time with anything with colour pencils is always worthwhile, in my opinion. They are a very slow medium, but it's worthwhile to see a piece come together. So I just thought I would tell you a little bit about this parrot. So this parrot is actually our pet parrot that I'm drawing. She is an eclectus parrot. Her name is Dory. Yes, like the movie Finding Dory, because we actually found her. She was a lost bird or an abandoned bird that flew into my workplace and I brought her home to care for her. We never found an owner. After searching for months, nobody claimed her. So now she still lives with us and that was four years ago. So that's why we named her Dory. So this image, I think this is quite an old image I found on my phone, but I liked the pose. I liked sort of the, the old, over the shoulder, turning back to look at your pose. And she does have a plucking problem on her neck and lower chest, or upper chest rather. And so this position of her actually hides most of that problem and makes her look more, more like a normal bird, I suppose. So that's why I have decided to draw this particular parrot, because it is our pet parrot. I thought, what better subject to try these pencils out on? Not to mention, she is a blue and red parrot which makes life so much easier when I only have 12 colours to work with. Blue and red with a nice green background, with a branch that she's sitting on. That's not too many colours that should be easy to achieve. So I thought, perfect subject for this 12 colour pencil challenge with these new polychromos. Once again in the background there, I'm just going over the green that I just laid down with some more blues and browns just to bring out those colours again because once I go over with the green those colours get a little bit washed out and lost. So I'm just adding them back in still quite lightly just slowly building up the colour. Now I think my problem with this paper texture was that it's a very... the texture is fine, I think the problem was that it's a very uneven texture. I'm not sure, it just... I just don't think it's a very good paper, and that's my own fault, because I know for a fact that it was a pretty cheap paper when I bought it, and I thought it would be a good thing to test on, but really, if you're going to do something, it's not worth doing it on cheap paper. So I probably won't make that mistake again, even if I'm just doing a trial piece for something trying something out for the first time. It's hard to know how good your pencils perform if you use them on a poor quality paper. It's always going to affect how your pencils or any medium that you're using perform. If you're doing painting with watercolour and you use a bad watercolour paper, that's going to really badly reflect on your watercolour paints. And you might think it's the paints, it's the way I'm doing it, it's something I'm doing, or these paints are bad quality, but they might not be, it might just be the paper. So once again, going over with that green to darken that up again, followed by filling in the lighter bokeh circles, just to pop the colour up a bit more because now that there's more strength on that main green background, the circles look extremely pale. 
So I've had to fill them in a little bit more. It's just repetition, repetition, repetition. Fill that in, layer it up. You just layer upon layer upon layer. <laughs> it's almost never ending. But I thought if I did the background first, I would have more patience for it. Well, the issue is if I coloured in my parrot first, I thought I may not have the patience then to come through and do the background. I thought if I did the background first, I'd spend a lot more time on it because I'd be, I'd be interested in getting to the parrot and I'm working towards something. Whereas once I'd finished the parrot, which is the complex part, I would have, perhaps my patience wouldn't have been as good and I might have rushed the background. But this way I spent a lot of time on the background, probably almost half of all the time that it took me to complete it. So in this step I'm using a, I don't know what they're actually called, a, it's just a paper blending stump. People often use them with solvents, but I'm just using it dry here to rub around the edges of the bokeh circles just to Make them a little bit fuzzy, not so sharp, make it look like they're out of focus a bit more. Followed up by a little bit of white pencil there over the top of a couple of the circles. Before I start on Dory. And as you can see, I've got my phone there with my little reference image so that you can see a little bit of the image there. So my apologies that the phone is in the shot and I'm constantly flicking my hand there. I notice after I filmed that first time that's quite distracting, so I've moved that away. And I'm just filling in those feathers and I'm trying to find as many colours in those feathers as I can from that photo so I can layer them up so they look realistic because if I just used red and dark red, they're not going to look real, but I'm using blue and sometimes a little bit of green because there's green in the background there. So now I'm doing some blue feathers, mostly light blue, dark blue, but also blacks, whites, trying to get the variation in the colour and the shadows, adding some greens, and just moving my way up the bird feather by feather, focusing on each feather or set of feathers at a time, building up, building up the layers of colour underneath to give it a lot more depth. As you can see I'm using quite a variety black, the dark red, the light blue, this rich blue. I don't remember what the colours are called, they're just the colours from the 12 pack of Polychromos. And just building it up again and again and again, layer after layer. And that's really all it is to really get it looking... Oh, there's my cat again! <laughs> so they've got beds on my desk, otherwise they would sit on my work. So sometimes they'd come over and go, ooh, what are you doing? And again, as you can see, I'm using a light blue in that red feather, along with green. And that really helps get that variation. Especially since the green is in the background, so you get green reflect reflected light. Did I say that was a red feather? If I did, I was mistaken. <laughs> it's clearly a blue feather now. I don't remember what I've done. I 
But as you can see, this isn't a quick, easy process, and I'm not doing the whole bird at once. I'm not laying all the blue under layers down and working like I did with the background where I did all the green then I went over with the little bits of blue and the brown and then went over with all the green again. This is different. I'm doing it feather by feather because if I did the whole thing at once it would probably be a bit overwhelming but it's so easy with feathers they're already segmented so you can break them up into those segments really really easily and focus on a feather at a time. And that makes it, actually, I think, quite a bit easier to get accurate. You don't have to do every single feather and all the detail, but especially with these larger feathers, it's good to get those in accurately. And when you get to the smaller body feathers, you can sort of, you know, imply detail, but also they don't have to be laying exactly where they have to be laying. They can be sort of accurate and still look completely accurate. So see all these different colours? I've got orange, dark red, I think I put a bit of blue, there was green, now black onto this feather, yet there's some more blue, some more green, some more dark red. Just building up different colours, some light blue, before finally going over with red again, and then some more layers. As you can see, if I just used dark red and red on that, it wouldn't look anything like that, it wouldn't have that richness and that depth of colour. And using the white to get some sort of little suggestion of light reflection on the sort of the curved edges of the feather there. I must admit the polychromos white is about what I'd read and expected of it, that it wasn't very good. And they're right, it's not very good. It doesn't layer over the top very well. But, you know, it works nicely for adding subtle highlights in. And if you use it prior to laying down other colours, it actually works quite well at maintaining those white or very pale areas after, if you lay the other colours over the top afterwards. So it does have its uses, but I can see why people like using a different white that's a bit more opaque to do some highlights after they've gone in with polychromos. So I'm really not sure what else to say because every feather is the same process. Layer different colours. Look at your reference photo, that's really, really important. I spent so much time looking at my reference photo. Probably half the time is looking at the reference and half the time is colouring. Because you want to see what colours are in this feather and where are each of those feathers. And the more that I drew, I realised the more colours I was seeing in each individual feather. Because when you just look at them first glance, you think, oh, that's a red feather, that's a blue feather. But the more I looked, the more I saw those subtle greens, the blues, the browns that might, you know, lead to that depth. And make it more realistic and believable. And looking at your reference a lot also allows you to put the light in the right places, the shadows in the right places. Because if the highlights and the darks aren't in the right place, it's not going to look right. You might not necessarily know why it looks wrong, but you'll know that it looks wrong and that something's off and it's not quite right. So it's really important to pay very close attention to your reference photo. And ideally, the better quality reference photo, the better, the larger that reference is, the better. Referencing from my phone is really not a good thing to do because it can only get so big there's only so much detail I can get on there. But, I mean, it still did the job for this picture. So 
So as you can see in my sketch, I hadn't laid in all the feathers on her shoulder there and over her back. I hadn't detailed where those feathers were exactly going because the main things I needed on my sketch were the wing feathers and the tail feathers and obviously the head and all of those things. And those smaller feathers, that detail doesn't really matter as much until you get to when you're colouring it in. And then, as I said, because they're smaller feathers, they don't have to be as accurate to look realistic or believable. So I'm slowly getting there, as you can see. Very close, halfway along almost on the bird. One feather at a time. I actually liked that I started at the bottom of this and worked my way towards the head because I still found the head quite challenging when I got there because, well, eclectus are quite unique in that the feathers on their heads are more like hairs, so they're sort of individual, they're not like. I don't know the proper terminology actually. You know how the feathers on her back are broad feathers with a, you know. And you often get, you just get smaller versions of those on the head. That's not what eclectus have. Their feathers are more fur-like on their head. And so there's not really a lot of shadow and contrast and variation in that. They just look like this vivid red head without much detail, unless you've got all those fine feathers in sharp focus. So I found the head quite challenging, so I'm glad that I had the whole body of the bird to practice on before I got to the head, so I could say, okay, I need to lay in more of these colours to de get depth, and I need to do, you know, continue layering and add some darks here to make it look like it's rounded, and just all of those things that I might have otherwise missed if I'd just gone straight into the head. So up here on the neck I'm putting in some feathery black areas and that's just to indicate her downy feathers there because she does pluck around her neck as I said earlier and at the top of her chest and that's why you only see the downy feathers there and I haven't done a lot of red so you'll see a bit more of that in a minute. these little feathers I probably could have done you know more than one at a time but I found it easier like I've said before just to focus on one feather at a time and then build that one up before moving on to the next one because there are subtle differences in feathers even right next to each other like one might be quite dark and the other one might be turned slightly differently so that catches the light in a different way and it's important to pay attention to those differences And as I say that, I'm, <laughs> as you can see, I've work, worked on two feathers at a time there, but not something I was doing quite often, very often. When you see me moving back to other areas to add in little dark areas, it's just more, as you work through an image and it becomes more and more complete, you may realise that your contrast in earlier sections of the image may not be quite good enough. The darks may not be dark enough, the lights may not be light enough. So a few times I'm going back into those areas that I've previously done and adding a bit more depth to the shadows just to really make things pop, really make them stand out. Otherwise they could end up looking a bit flat once the whole image is complete. So 
So, Eclectus parrots are native to far north, far northern. Ugh. Eclectus parrots are native to far northeastern Australia, like really, really far north. Um, and also, I think it's New Guinea and some islands up through there. So there's about, there's a number of different subspecies and the Australian subspecies is actually not very common in the pet trade. I would say she's like a, a small cockatoo or like a galah, those pink and grey parrots that people have. I don't know if they're common overseas or bigger than an Indian ringneck. And she has a very bulky bill, very large bill for her size in my opinion. And <laughs> let me tell you, it hurts when she bites. I have been bitten, uh, I think twice before. Once was not so bad, the other time was very, very bad. I was saying they're native to Australia, she's not the Australian species, but in the wild, um, when they nest, the females will actually stay in the nest hollow the whole time, sitting on eggs. And I think also while there are chicks in there. And then the males just constantly bring them food. But a female can have multiple males bringing her food, working for her. So it's all a little bit of a ploy, to be honest. <laughs> And so these female birds can actually be very hormonal and moody. Um, Dory can be that way sometimes, but other times she's cute. You see I'm working in those head details, and as you can see it's not the head is not detailed like the body is because, as I said, it's got those fine furry feathers. And now I'm just doing the foot that I'd forgotten about and a few little feathers down near there. Now you can see I'm not drawing a claw on the back of that foot, that's because she's actually missing that claw. I think that's, um, it could be from when she was a chick, it might have been chewed off by a parent bird or got caught in the nest box. Not terribly uncommon for pet parrots to unfortunately have missing claws. But she's, she does fine without it, she doesn't need it, she still climbs around very easily. So now I'm just laying in the colours for the branch that she's sitting on. I'm using, we've got, I mean, there's branch references everywhere. I just went out in the backyard and I've got pieces of branches there that I keep aside to put in her cage sometimes, give her different perches, different things to explore. So I just went out, took some photos of one of those because it was too big to bring in and sit on my desk while I was working on this. Took some photos of that so I could reference it. It's actually a eucalyptus species, which is a native Australian gum tree. And I'm just laying in those colours. I don't have any greys in my 12 pack of polychromos. So getting grey colours was a bit challenging. Laying in light layers of black, some light blue, some light browns. And just like before, layering and layering and layering until I get the tone right, even a little bit of green. So just trying to get it looking how it's supposed to look. It was sort of a thing where I'd, I'd done the whole, well I thought I'd done the whole background and then I did the bird I was like yes it's finished and then I realized I hadn't done the branch yet and I couldn't believe that I forgot to do the branch when I was doing the rest of the background but it actually worked out all right and I I did quite enjoy 
um, colouring in the branch. So once I had finished with Dory, I realised that the background probably wasn't quite rich enough anymore. So once again, I went in and laid in some browns and some blues on there. And I used the blending stub to sort of work them in a little bit. And try and work some of that colour into the gaps of the paper. Which, you know, like I said early on in the video, if I was using solvent, like anybody who uses a, a solvent like um, odorless mineral spirits or zest it, you know, you can use a solvent and all that pigment goes into the gaps in the paper and you get a really rich layer of colour. But I'm not using solvent, so I just thought for the background, I would push some of that colour into the gaps a little bit. And then I'm going through and doing the same in the bokeh circles in the background as well. Adding in a few fine last touches, and there you have it. This is the completed image of my parrot Dory. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, or even if you didn't enjoy it, tell me why in the comments. I would love to hear back from you on what was what I did well in this video, what I didn't do well. If you liked it, please leave me a thumbs up. It really helps to support me and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.